All right. So hello, everybody. Um, time for the next episode. And um, this is going to be shorter than the last one. Uh, that's the intent anyway. And um, we'll probably do two uh, closer together. I'll probably um, uh, publish two closer together to kind of finish off this rot 13. So this is the code we had before um, that we saved and I'll put up on the blog post the link to the GitHub repo. And I just want to mention one thing here that um, notice that I named the file rot13.el. And um, one of the things that, that you can do, well, one, EL is for ELISP and so Emacs knows to put it in ELISP mode, etc. But you can actually, if you, um, one of the things we can do is we've been running stuff by typing in control X, control, you know, control X E um, to execute functions. But you could also, if you wanted to, evaluate the entire buffer. And there's also a way to evaluate the region if you want to mark, like if you like, oh, I want to, I want to run the E list going from here to here. I can mark that and then type escape x eval region and it'll run that elisp. Or if I want to do the whole buffer, I can do eval buffer. Um, however, um, sometimes, or not sometimes, when we're done with this, we don't want to have to load our code into a buffer and type in, um, you know, eval buffer, whatever. So we can actually load the file and loading the file and then I'll specify rot13. Let's, let's actually put in an insert hello here. Hello, I was loaded. And if I do load file, and I do rot13, notice that hello, I was loaded is put into our buffer. Um, and if I move up here and I do, um, whoops, let me just clean that up. If I move up here, just a couple of undos, and I do escape x load file, and I specify rot 13 el um, what load file will do is it loads and runs a file of elisp. So you can do this to kind of load in your code, or it's one of the ways um, you can load in your code. We'll get more into other ways later on, but I just wanted to show that. So anyway, let's get rid of that. We need it. Um, so what I wanted to show today was a couple of things. First is this version of um, ROT13 is very limited. It only does lowercase letters. So if I do something like hello world and I run this, you'll see on the bottom, it, it normally it should go, it'll ROT13 it and ROT13 it again. Um, and... Um, it should bring it back to hello world, but it, it gives us Bello world. Let's, um, let, let's insert this so we can see Bello world. And that's because the uppercase letters don't start at the same place as the lowercase letters. So we're going to make some changes here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a decision, um, inside of our rot 13 we're going to say like let's not just rot 13 or rotate uh, with an offset of 13 let's do a conditional and most languages have conditionals and um elisp does as well and most conditionals are if statements and the form of an if statement in elisp is if and then we have a boolean function and so this could be you know true or false, or it could be greater than, if A is greater than B, uh, or if something is equal to something, but it's some function, so it's the Boolean, and then the true part, and then the false part, you know, um, true part, false part. Um, it's the equivalent, and then close parentheses. So it's the equivalent of, in Python, if you said, if Boolean, True part, true part, else, false part. So it's the equivalent of that. And you'll notice that I'm putting in the true part and the false part. 
Um, you don't have to put in the false part. You don't need to put in the else. Um, but usually I do, usually I'm in situations I do because if you program in a functional style, you're usually going to be returning something. So you do want to have a false part as well. But let's do a very simple modification of rot 13. What we can say is if our character is both greater than or equal to the character A and less than or equal to, or it's, it, and the character C is less than or equal to the character Z, if both of those are true, then we're going to want to rotate the character because it's between lowercase a and lowercase z. Otherwise, we're just going to return the character. So we'll leave the character alone. Close up the lambda, close everything else, and let's see how that works. So I just ran that, where I ran it to define the function. And if I run this, notice, hello world, it rotates and rotates back. And let's actually Let's do two things here. Let's do this version just to do the rotate and the rotate back. And let's, in fact, put in a space. Just to show that um, it's leaving the H and the W and the space totally alone. Uh, so it's only rotating lowercase characters. So that's the if statement. It's really very similar um, to the if statements that you know from other languages. Uh, it's just that it's, um, it is a functional, it, it, it's as functions. Um, and again, notice here, this is the and function. So the and function I'll write up here. It's like and, and then condition one, condition two, condition three, however many you want. And in this case, it's greater than or equal to if the character C is greater than or equal to the character A or the character Z. So that's great. That works. Um, but now let's say we want to deal with the uppercase letters. Um, so what I'm going to do is let me just um, come over and comment that out. And let me make a copy of this. And um, so now we have a copy of this. And what we really want is we really want three situations. We want uppercase and lowercase, but we don't want um, we don't want the other character. It's like we don't want to rotate the numbers. We don't want to rotate punctuation, space, um, exclamation point if we have it, you know, stuff like that. Uh, we just want to rotate the letters. Um, so we want three. So we could do, you know, we could chain our if statement. So let me actually go to a Python file just so it's the formula, right? And in Python, we know we can do if, you know, if Boolean one, do stuff. LF Boolean to do more stuff and then else do even more stuff. Or in a language like Java or C or C, we'd have if Boolean do stuff, else if Boolean or, or else if, sorry. And um, yeah, well, I'm in Python. And then finally, the else. So we could do that in, in ELIS, um, but doing that's going to look a little bit um, ugly. So instead, there's another construct that ELIS has that I like a lot. And actually, it's a construct that pretty much most Lisps have. So let me just make some room in here. And it's the cond for conditional, I guess. And cond basically 
Um, and it's a little bit different depending on um, the lisp that you're using. Uh, but basically, you give it clauses. Um, and so that'll be the first conditional clause, the second one, the third. And you can give it as many as you want. And the clauses have two parts. The Boolean, so the Boolean here would be and greater, whoops, greater than or equal to C A, less than or equal to C C. And so that's this conditional. And if this conditional is met, we want to rotate, um, is rotate what I call? Yes, rotate C by 13. And then I close that off. And then my next one would be if it's greater than the uppercase A and the lowercase A, we will do something else. And then the final case, usually in other languages, you want to, or in, 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 in these languages, you want to catch all. You want a condition that's always going to be true. And so the easiest way to do that is T for true, and we'll just return the character. And so, and then we'll close our con, and it's not quite done yet. And now we're going to just execute that to, to, to get ready to test it. Now, this should do nothing different than before, other than it should rotate the lowercase letters. It should also rotate the uppercase letters, which is not really what we want, but it should not rotate the, the, uh, the space and the exclamation. So let's see if that happens. Well, that worked. Um, it did rotate the H and the W. And that also worked. Got the bellow quirled like we did before. So now we got to finish our rotate. And the way we'll do that is going to be very simple. Um, rotate really just needs another character, which is base. What is the base of which our, our first letter? And here our base is 97 because that's for lowercase letters. Um, so here, really, we just want to supply a base of 97. And the lowercase, the uppercase A starts at 65, so its base is going to be 65. Um, and that should do it. You know, the, you know, I've got these extra things here, so let's see. That worked. It rotated the U, the H, and the W, but notice that it rotated them differently than before and then it rotated them back. So the cond, very, very powerful. It's also worth noting that the cond is not a switch statement, okay? Um, a lot of Lisp type languages have a switch statement. In a switch statement, you just have to give like a single value for a variable, like switch A, switch B, or case A, case B, case C. Um, like in C, so in C mode, we could say switch off the variable C, and we have case, if it's an A, do this, and then break. If it's a B, do this, and then break, et cetera. But it, you, it's very, it's discrete values. Whereas in the conditional, you can just get any Boolean you want here, anything that's true or false, any variables you want, it's much more powerful. So anyway, that's your, um, your if statements, and with these if statements, or if and con, the conditional statements, we can now make decisions in our um, ELISP code. So what we're going to do in our next video, we're going to look at making our ROT13 um, interactive. So we can call it with escape X, when we, we can you bind it to a key, we can do things like, oh, let me mark a region and ROT13 that region, and actually make it useful. All right, so that's it for now, and I'll see you next time.